seriously? Hey folks, Dave here, and as you guys just saw, we're going to have a bit of arts and crafts today as I walk you guys through how I designed my new Park Ranger themed Ranger Dave PC build with the help of the folks over at Apex Gaming PCs. I'm officially an Apex partner, but we're going to get to that in just a minute because this computer was a bit of a journey. I'm not really big into all of the spinny LEDs and whatnot. I thought it would be fun to do an outdoorsy, uh, actual park ranger-esque, national park, firewatch inspired PC build, but it was hard to imagine what that might look like. I really liked the Corsair C70 case that has been my PC case for all of my builds since 2014. Mine was the OD green version that looks basically just like an ammo can, and it just fit my style perfectly. I mean, how cool was that case? But they don't make those anymore, so if Apex was going to build me a ridiculously powerful computer, I had to figure out the uh, style side of it, right? How could this PC fit the channel brand? And for those of you guys who always wondered, where did the Ranger Dave brand come from? Well, it came from a goofy short film that was basically a extreme version of my actual personality. We filmed it with the Casual Shenanigans gaming podcast crew way out in the mountains, and you guys can watch it via the link in the description if you've missed it. That short film we finished up as I was trying to rebrand the channel, and Ranger Dave just clicked, that character. Minus the creepy stalker glasses, uh, those had to go. <laughs> but beyond that, Ranger Dave was just a fun rebrand for the channel. Not an actual park ranger, nor an army ranger. Closest thing I ever got was Eagle Scout, so... I do love the outdoors, kind of fit. How do you make a PC feel like the outdoors though without going too far? Here's how I went about it. I kicked off this project last summer actually by doing some concept renderings of what I wanted the case to look like. I knew that I wanted to get it painted green much like my Corsair case. And I also knew that I wanted to go for kind of a lantern light effect on the interior lighting for the case. I wanted no LEDs if possible, or just background LEDs. The goal was to make it look almost like a lantern light, perhaps with a bit of an industrial look, so I was going to have a cage of some type. One quick note here, these bulbs are all LEDs. They're Edison style, but they are LEDs. I wanted to introduce as little extra heat and wattage to the inside of my computer case as possible. I ended up going through a bunch of different lights and cages, trying to find the perfect look that would also fit inside of the computer case. I had heard really good things about the Corsair 5000D case just as a standalone case. Apex's build team highly recommended that case as well. This is where the project already got off the rails though. We couldn't find anyone to paint the case. We spent months looking, but everyone is booked up. All of the automotive shops, and we even went through a bunch of Cerakote options. Cerakote is a ceramic based paint that's cured with heat, and it's usually applied to things like firearms and industrial tools. Finally, Seth, a Cerakote applicator out of Texas, came to the rescue. He agreed to do the entire case for us, and he did an amazing job with a really complicated and unusual project. So, shout out to Seth for saving the day when no one else would do this paint job for us. My final lighting selection ended up being this very tall cage light with a bulb that I customized from an Edison type with some additional bright orange fluorescent spray paint on top to give it a very, very warm color. I also realized that this Corsair 5000D has these two perfectly placed removable covers outside of the GPU that I could pop out to get my plugs through for all of the lighting. After all of that work, getting the case Cerakoted in green and it made it all the way back to the build crew over at Apex to be assembled, we had a couple more issues to figure out. The first one was we picked the white base case. 
so that it would be easily paintable and that the Cerakote would coat with the OD green color really well. That was a good decision, but that left us with a couple of plastic white parts that weren't Cerakoted because Cerakote requires heat treating to, uh, to cure it. So I had some white parts like this um, kind of cable management cover down here at the very bottom. We had all the white filters, but probably the biggest wrench in the whole plan was the side panel here, which you guys now see is covered in some nice rustic looking wood. The side panel still had a white metal inset uh, behind the glass actually. It was bright, bright white. So you couldn't just easily cover it up. That's where I came up with the idea to go with some uh, aged lumber and actually create kind of a window frame and make it look a bit more rustic while also covering up that white uh, outer border. They do sell spares of the black side panel, but they're like six months back ordered like everything else right now. So that wasn't an option. I wasn't sure in the beginning how well this would actually work with the weight of the wood and just being mounted right to the glass. But to my surprise, it ended up working so well, you can actually pick that side panel up by the wooden pieces. So here's how we did it. Before we deep dive, I wanna share with you guys how you can also get an Apex built PC. These guys are really known for a personal touch when it comes to their builds. These aren't uh, assembly line PCs. They're, they're boutique, hand-built, carefully designed PCs. And for you guys as an Apex partner, I've gone through and actually uh, set up three tiers of PCs with specs that I've designed and I've gone over with the Apex build team. And these are computers that I know are gonna play uh, the games that I enjoy playing well. So if you guys enjoy watching me play these games, these are all PCs that are gonna be able to tackle those games. They're also in three different price tiers, so everybody could find a PC that works for their budget, especially right now when the PC market, as far as trying to build one, is just absolutely nuts. I never thought I would be so excited for a pre-built PC, but the guys at Apex really saved my bacon. I speak from experience. I've been trying to help a family member build a PC right now, and it is a nightmare. We still have no GPU for them. If you guys grab a Ranger Dave approved Apex PC, you can pick from the Guide, the Explorer, or the Pioneer. Those are your three tiers. Again, all hand selected spec wise and checked out by me. Check out the Ranger Dave page there on the Apex website for all of the specs and details. I'm gonna run some by for you guys right here. But also don't forget to use code Ranger Dave on checkout where you can save up to $250 per purchase depending on which one of those tiers you're gonna be picking up. While Seth was painting the case for us, I made our final selections for the hardware inside this PC. I went with an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X and a very clean NZXT N7 B550 motherboard. The aesthetics of this motherboard were kind of the heart of the build, no pun intended. It has a really, really nice looking black cover faceplate over the board itself. And that was really gonna complement the lighting I wanted to add to the case. I didn't want a bunch of glowing LEDs on my RAM, on my motherboard. I wanted the parts themselves inside the PC to be super clean looking. Also went with a two terabyte M2 solid state drive, as well as a RTX 3080 Ti. The bad luck with this project continued as soon as I unboxed the new Apex PC. Yes, I did actually drop it and put a dent in the side panel as soon as I got it onto my workbench, but also when I pulled my old PC off of the entertainment center that I had bought back in college, the whole table and entertainment center collapsed. So I had to grab a side table to put the new PC on so I could work on it while I waited on a replacement. Also a quick shout out here to Apex for their incredibly clean cable management. This is after I'd already pulled a bunch of cables loose to add in some extra hard drives that I had for my old PC, but check this out. They actually label the individual cables for you with custom Apex tags so you can easily figure out where each wire is going. That is a really nice attention to detail right there. Once I had landed on the idea of using wood, making a kind of window frame to cover up that white side panel, I hit up my local Home Depot and almost went for some traditional wooden trim, but all of these designs just looked like just too much. It was gonna look like a picture frame, no matter how I stained it, and none of the trim looked like it was gonna work well. That's when for about 32 bucks, I found this box of artificially weathered basically wall shiplap. It's designed to do an accent wall. And the downside to this being artificially weathered wood is if you cut it, you do have to then try and match the artificial stain. But the price was right, so I picked up a crate of it 
and decided to see if these scotch sticky tape velcro like holders could actually attach the wood securely to the side panel. That was the other advantage to this wood though, it was extremely lightweight. There were also a few parts of the side panel that had to be painted like the back hinges that were going to be visible at all times from my desk as well as the edge around the glass. I really wanted to try and have no white edges visible whatsoever once I hopefully got that wood frame on top of it. For the paint, I just used some Rust-Oleum camouflage in flat military green and taped off the glass to protect it. You guys can see here how much of the back hinge was actually still going to be white. Really had to cover that up or it would have been really, really distracting. I also had to paint this cable management cover, which is where my accent light was going to sit. Uh, having that thing bright white was definitely not going to work. With a simple frame laid out and measured on top of my side panel, I went out to the table saw, which has been through the ringer, as you guys can see. It's built two houses, basically, in my family. It's a practically a family heirloom at this point. And I ran these pieces through to trim them down. They were almost four inches wide originally, and I cut them down to about half of that. Like Dad always said, measure twice, cut once. It looks like I actually pulled it off here. Again though, the only trick to using artificially weathered wood is, once you cut it, you've got to artificially weather it once again. So I had to stain the cut edges of my wood pieces here. I went with the yard sale collection of stains out of the garage. Uh, some Sedona red mixed in with this bean something stain. Honestly, the can is so rusted it's almost impossible to tell. But it mixed well with the red and got me a nice weathered edge for the inside parts of my cuts. Next, it was time to put those scotch connectors to work. These things are supposedly rated for up to 10 pounds each. And if you look close, they're little tiny balls instead of the hook and loop of Velcro. I was skeptical but curious. So this ended up being basically total overkill as even without the heat gun, these things stuck to the wood insanely strongly even without the heat. I was definitely impressed by these things. With the side panel painted and the wood all set, it was time to see how things were actually going to attach. And that's where I actually discovered yet another issue with the side panel. And that's that the scotch attachment pieces were going to cause a space between the glass and the back of the boards. If you think about it, you've got two connectors, one on the glass and then one on the back of the board. So they were going to have almost an eighth of an inch of spacing where you could clearly see the white behind the board. At this point, I'd already gone so far, I was determined that there was not going to be any of that white side panel visible whatsoever. So I grabbed my handy dandy Ranger approved OD green duct tape. Everybody's got that lying around, right? I ran the duct tape down all of the edges of the window to help hide the white and it actually worked really, really well. It's got a slight glossy sheen to it, but most of the time you're never even going to notice it. And I can guarantee you, you're going to notice that green duct tape way less than you would have noticed that white side panel accent being visible behind the wood. Throughout all of this, I was constantly trying different light combos and still nothing looked as good as my fluorescent orange painted, uh, almost lantern filament like light bulb inside of that tall and narrow cage. It really has a gas lantern look to it. It's pretty awesome. This is where I definitely went a little bit too far in the design and that's with uh, this chicken wire, uh, green coated wire mesh screen. I was going to go for kind of a screen door effect, maybe a, a rustic like camping or not a camping, a hiking shelter window or something, but it was just way too much, especially with the tint that I was putting on the, uh, the case window originally. Uh, the tint is off right now for easier filming. I might put it back on just to dim the lights a bit, but the combination of the uh, chicken wire fence and the tint both was just way too much. It was way too busy. And I wanted to add those posters in there for some visual interest and you were going to be able to read none of that with that chicken wire on there. So that ended up coming off. I spent a bunch of time laying it out, attaching it to the window. And as soon as I put it up there, I was like, this looks terrible. This has got to come off. I actually only took this one photo of it on there because I took it off so fast. You guys can just tell from the phone photo, it looked terrible. So that was too far. The chicken wire wasn't a total loss though, as it led to one of my favorite additions to the inside of the case that really was a 11th hour idea, and that was to make miniature cage bulbs out of these small fan lights. I found a couple of these lamp cords that took the ceiling fan style bulbs, and I found Edison style bulbs to fit them, 
and I realized with the chicken wire, some of the scrap that I had left over from all that cutting, I could actually make little tiny cage lights to then mount at different positions inside the case. And this was a great discovery because even with this really cool accent light and the addition of the Apex Gaming LED fans that I had set to a soft orange light to help fill out the rest of the case, there were still some very, very dark corners of the case that just didn't look right with just having the one light bulb inside. It might be a bit hard to tell in the footage here, but trust me, this really helped fill out some of those really dark corners of the case. And yes, before you worry about it, I did do multiple tests with some heavy benchmarking to see if this was going to actually affect my computer's temperature. And from what I've seen, it doesn't at all. Another last minute change that I made was I discovered a stash of actual official Firewatch stickers that I had bought in 2016 sitting in the back of my storage cabinet. One of them was this really great looking vinyl sticker with a transparent background with the Firewatch logo. And it was the perfect accent for the outside middle of our glass side panel. To match it, I also picked up some Firewatch filled in vinyl stickers to put one on the front panel of the case. And the front panel of the case is also where I added one of my favorite custom pieces, a little decorative average rainfall national park sign that I had made up last year as a nod to that short film we had made. It was the perfect accent to make the front of the panel extra immersive. With the clock counting down until I had to film this final build video, a replacement TV stand finally arrived. I actually found one with a really cool rustic wood style to it to replace my Murphy's Law collapsed one. And also from Corsair, I was able to order all of the black fan filters and I went through and replaced all of those because you could still really clearly see those white filters inside of all of the edges of the case and it was really distracting. The black ones blend in much, much better as you guys can see here. I set up all of the interior custom Edison cage lights to run off of a single fader switch. The advantage of that is I have a really cool switch mounted right to the front of my receiver below the case where I can just run the slider up and down and control all of the interior lights at the same time. With all of the wiring bundled up and tucked away, it was time to add the last couple of touches. First up, I was hoping to get a really cool vinyl Ranger Dave sticker for the side window to match that Firewatch sticker in its style, but didn't have enough time. So I grabbed one of my white vinyl stickers and spent way too much time cutting out the entire Ranger Dave logo with an X-Acto knife piece by piece and it ended up looking a little bit like a ransom letter but the advantage to having a rough rustic outdoorsy style logo is if it's a little bit rough around the edges quite literally you can kind of get away with it finally for the large back panel behind our main accent light i wanted to have a couple of pieces of artwork and unfortunately the firewatch store is closed so i couldn't get some additional firewatch merch to add to the back but I did find this really neat fan-made Firewatch poster in just the perfect size to fit along that back panel, along with this really cool 1950s style Ranger service postcard that I picked up when I was at Yellowstone last time. The last step of cable management was to get out my handy dandy Dremel tool and cut one of the backplate covers to route all of those lamp cords through and keep uh, a little bit of the dust out hopefully but also keep those cords from getting too pinched or from being too loose. And with that, this build was finally complete. There you have it guys, there's our completed Ranger themed PC. There's still a few things I'm tweaking. I have a uh, rustic actual historical American flag, but that didn't make it in time for recording this video. But everything else did, including our, uh, our Nixie tube thermometer back there, which is I think one of my favorite props. That thing is awesome. 
I hope you guys enjoyed watching this about, I'd say, maybe half as much as I enjoyed putting the whole thing together. Don't forget, check out my three tiers of Ranger-themed and Ranger-approved builds over at the Apex PC website. Use code RANGERDAVE to get that discount. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.